At the turn of the century, the streets of Portland were lined with elaborate, ornately decorated buildings. And they eventually caught the eye of an artist who would become one of America's most important photographers. But a closer look reveals that the ornament on these buildings wasn't carved wood or chiseled stone. It was made from cast iron. 1853 to 1889 was the cast iron era in Portland. Most of the buildings of that Victorian era was cast iron fronted. Even our courthouse had cast iron art. It was a affordable way to reproduce sort of the grandeur that you would see in European cities like Venice. The Bickel Block on NATO Parkway is one of a handful of cast iron buildings that remains today. It's a building that fully embraced the Victorian era. The exuberance of the time was decoration, and they went to town on this building. Corinthian columns are about as exuberant as you can be. A lot of the details looked like stone. For instance, this pilaster here, with its, its coins and the decoration, uh, was very inventive, but way out here in the West, they didn't have the stonemasons. They didn't have the army of craftsmen. However, if they had one artisan who could carve a wood form that could be made into a cast iron piece. Cast iron was made by melting down large pieces of iron ore and, and pouring the molten iron into molds. You know, once those were cooled, they'd open those up and you had your column or you had your fancy griffin ornament. Architects could browse catalogs, choosing from dozens of cast iron ornaments to decorate their buildings. Used correctly, they'd look just like stone. There's one way to tell that a building is really cast iron, and that is with a magnet. Place a magnet on here, it sticks. It is really cast iron architecture. But by the 1930s, everything began to change. There were two forces that pretty well ended our cast iron heritage. One was the flood problem. The other was the car. Now the car came along, and of course we had no parking lots for them. Well, there's that old building over there. It's practically derelict. Tear it down. But in 1939, the Works Progress Administration, a Depression-era government work program, hired a young photographer by the name of Minor White for a special assignment. Minor was asked to photograph, in particular, the buildings along Front Avenue that were about to be torn down. Minor was just starting out in photography at the time. Minor White is known worldwide primarily for the beautiful and often abstract work that he produced in the 1950s through the 1970s. He's incredibly important in the history of photography and it is a rare history of photography course that would not speak to the type of work that he did. I think that we can see Miner's fully fledged aesthetic beginning to emerge in the work that he does for the WPA. You can see his wonderful understanding of light and of form. So the works can function as records, but they can also function as artistic expressions. This is one of two warehouses owned by the Architectural Heritage Center in Southeast Portland. Well, on the top of the storage rack uh, are where most of the interior moldings are. They collect and preserve architectural artifacts, including artifacts from Portland's cast iron era. That is just amazing. For the Minor White exhibit, we knew we had at least a few artifacts that showed up in some of his photos. 
And so when you get to see that photo and then you see the object right side by side, then you go, oh, wow, that's, you know, that's that sort of eye-opening moment where you're like, so that's what this stuff is made out of. What we have here is a cast iron keystone from a building in downtown Portland. You can see an identical piece to this in the photo of the New Market North Wing. As you can see, it's a gorgeous piece of cast iron that probably weighs, you know, 100 pounds or something. We're pretty lucky that somebody with the photography skills of Minor White was here taking photos when he did, because if he had come a year or two later, all of those buildings along Front Avenue in particular would have been torn down without ever having been documented. A good photographer can make us feel how hot the sun is as it beats down in the middle of summer or how misty the fog can be and how dark a February Portland night can be. It doesn't look anything like that anymore. You can't even imagine it. And so that's why his photos are so important to the city.